Hi, welcome to our biomechanics lab. I'd like to show you around and give you an idea of exactly what we do. This is where I start my individual lessons uh, and we start our golf schools. This is where we do our putter and full swing fittings. So I want to give you an idea of what that's about, the equipment we have and how we use it. So we get the player's name. Obviously I've input mine. We have uh, height, weight, we look at the chest width or body width. We get shoulder width, we get shoe size, we get waist size, uh, left and right arm length, and um, and we choose a sport here. Obviously we're, our sport is golf. And <clears throat> then we click on the start. Now, once the uh, we get start, we go back to we have a laser hand scanner. I'm going to put my hand on here. And when my hand is positioned properly, first my left hand, and I click on process image, it will scan my hand and then give me a grip size. And then I'll scan my right hand. And once we have uh, the grip size, we the, imp the information we input will also give us putter stance widths, irons and wood stance widths, and other points of balance. If you've viewed some of the other videos, you'll understand how we use this information. Uh, and I'll show you in a little bit uh, exactly what we do. This is emailed to both the student and to us here in the lab, so the student has a permanent copy. The original research in the biomechanics lab, we had insoles. This is the uh, system it has a thousand sensors under each foot so we had really had the foot covered and this is where the balance research came from uh, for the lab we have an identical system in many ways it's better that you can stand on either in shoes or in your sock feet so I'm going to show you how that system works now so when I stand on this mat as you can see then uh, it is going to display on the screen where my weight distribution is left and right and if you viewed the videos uh, or uh, that are online or the summary of absolute balance you'll understand how we interpret these data. So as you can see here uh, as I stand here on this mat if I uh, flare my left foot out we're able to see the amount of flare, we're able to see the rotation of the heel and uh, the line of force and center of force which is a result of, uh, I don't think you're able to see it here, but we are, there's a box, two boxes on the screen that are moving in the left and right foot uh, up and down. Uh, if I increase the weight distribution of the heel to the left and toward the toes of the right, you'll see those boxes move. <clears throat> this tells us an awful lot about the setup, about what stands with, where this player is in their best balance. Uh, tells us where they need to be with a putter, with the irons in the woods before we go out to the range and begin to hit balls. Normally what we'll do is as I move back onto the mat, you'll see that the image is very different. I put my shoes on because we really want to understand in your golf shoes, not barefooted, but in your golf shoes, exactly what are we looking at in terms of balance. And uh, that's this image looks a little different, but those boxes that I referred to earlier will still move up and down. Those are, Those boxes as you'll read on the uh, other sections of the website, really tell us about the path of the course. Now the next thing we do is we have players stand on a line mat and we'll attach a bar <coughs> with a bungee cord, square their hips, and we'll have them stand on that line mat and we will look at what changes they experience in core uh, at a variety of different stance widths. Now, our goal in golf is to set a square stance, square hips, and square shoulders. What our research shows is that 98% of the population does not fit that. So biomechanically, we'll start to balance the core, two to three minute exercise program. You've likely seen that online as well. And then we can balance the core and we have a level playing field. Now we can check alignment as when we get to the range. <coughs> if my core is not balanced, I'm going to have a rotation of the hips left or right and I'm going to have to play from an open or closed stance. If I'm playing from an open or a closed stance in order to get my hips square, 
we cannot teach alignment because the feet are making adjustments when the core is not balanced to be able to get the hips square. Once we know that we have a level playing field, the stance, hips are square now, we will check the effect that uh, stance width has on, on uh, core rotation. Uh, everybody has a, a series of points where they're going to be in balance. The email I showed you a few moments ago where your stance widths are listed online, we mark on a yardstick much like these, this one is marked and we'll put it down on the mat and we'll have them check their core and the effect different stance widths have on core rotation. Let's take a look at mine. Now my numbers for a balanced stance width are based upon my body mass. Uh, one of my numbers, for example, is um, 19 inches. So here I am standing in 19 inches. I get set, I add my knee flex and my hips, <clears throat> now that my core is balanced, are parallel. If I step to a point that is not one of my balanced stance widths, and I add knee flex, my hips rotate left or open. And that means then my weight has moved forward in the right foot, and I can feel it toward the heel of my left, that's the path my club will track in the backswing. If I try and maintain my posture, I'm going to get stuck in the backswing. Club moves up and it's going to loop. Mult multiple things will create changes <coughs> in your center of force, line of force, if you've read that information online. And one of them in particular is stance width. Now the next thing we look at is posture. And in posture, we're looking at an angle of the body. This came out of the research in uh, the Citanella Biomechanics Lab, Dr. Job's lab, that this is an angle that dictates what my spine angle will be and what my thigh angle will be. We measure it with a digital protractor. There's a bubble here. We measure it 90 degrees to the ground. Now, when I have my proper posture, I have maximum rotation if I have a balanced stance width. Now, this is where we begin to see that the, the variables begin to work together. I'm going to take a weight that has two 10-pound discs, find my stance width that is most that I've determined. And by the way, as you look at stance width, you only have uh, two and sometimes three stance widths as you're going to use in your golf swing. You have one for putter, one for irons, and one for woods. Sometimes the irons and uh, putter are the same. So once you find that, you get in. You take this weight. We put it across your chest. For the ladies, we have a 10-pound weight. We get the set up, and this naturally sets the angles of that arm. And this is from here, I'll have maximum rotation with the least amount of resistance, maximum range of motion. If I simply change that posture, come up a little bit, I am, my rotation is uh, restricted. So I want to be in that posture. We get players with all different postures. The uh, more shallow this angle is, meaning closer to the body as you rotate your palms forward. Mine's out here. I have players here. The taller they're going to stand to the ball and the narrower their stance width. It's absolutely everybody is totally individual when you come to look at the biomechanics in your setup. Now if you look at my posture from the side, and I'm in a balanced stance width, you'll see that my spine angle, fine angle, the same from here is where I have maximum rotation, least amount of restriction. I come out of that posture, and this is where I find restriction in my range of motion. The other thing that I'll find restriction in my range of motion, I can be in a really good posture and have maximum rotation. All I have to do is step an inch out of my balance stance with to turn, and now I can't rotate. So <clears throat> my, my hip line, when I'm out of balance, <clears throat> my hips rotate left or open, which restricts my motion. Some players, when they're out of balance, they will have rotation to the right, which means that rotation to the right, they'll have over rotation and be stuck in the through swim. So balanced stance width and correct posture are going to impact your ability to have unrestricted motion as well as your um, ability to avoid injury. So now from the body measurements, we have, uh, we have stance width, we've determined posture, um, and 
We've also measured the hand size. Let's go back to hand size and take a look at how it impacts your balance. It's something you can do at home. Now here I have a driver. I put the bar back on my hips. <clears throat> I go to my balance setup. This is an off the shelf. It's actually uh, my driver. I put a small, just a standard grip on. Off the shelf grip. I get my hands at left hand on the club. I ground the club. And you'll notice that my hips rotate to the left. I can tell I have very severe rotation here, which means I'm going to get stuck trying to turn back. But my right knee protruded well beyond my left. My weight went to the toes of my right and toward the heel of my left. If I take a, without moving anything other than uh, changing grips, uh, another driver that this one is measured to fit me, and I ground my left hand, you'll notice that my hips remain square. So grip size, I can check left hand, and then I can check my right hand by placing my right hand on the club, going down to the ball, and just relaxing, and I can look and see that my knee flex is the same on both sides, my hips will remain square. Let's go back to this one, add both hands. So your left and right hand measurement on your grips are critical. Your average grip has a 60 to 80 mil taper, and historically left hand is the only hand that's been measured. We measure both hands, because now I want to check the roll of my right hand, and sure enough, my right hand is much too small, and my hips rotate to the right. So you can check your driver, you can check your irons, you can check your putter, doing the same thing, check first your left hand, then check your right hand, then you can check both hands, and you'll see that your, your hips, your knee flex will change either on the left side or the right side. Now the other thing we can do uh, in the biomechanics lab is look at club facing. We have a rod that has a magnet on it. It'll go right on the face of your irons and we can teach you how to aim your club face right at a target every time. And we can take a look at your putter. Here is an aluminum triangle this is a place for a ball, slides in against the face of the putter, pull the string line out, and we can show you how you're aimed with your putter. Not only can we show you how you're aimed, but we can teach you how to aim at a toothpick at six feet simply by having the proper stance width and the proper ball position. Your club path comes out of your balance. Your putter face and your iron and woods aim comes out of your stance width and ball position and how you approach the ball. Those uh, videos are online elsewhere on this site on how to aim your club face. So if you want to uh, take a look at our golf schools or look into an individual lesson, that information is also available on the site. But this is our biomechanics lab, and thanks for your time.